But anyway, uh, a big warm welcome to all of you to uh, to this session, Elevate the, the Sales Game, uh, a kind of a goodbye to 2022 and uh, happy hello to 2023. So for the next uh, hour, 60 minutes, I will inspire you how you can take the best farewell to, uh, to the year that is passing and how you can have the best entrance to the year starting. I've seen so many, so many sales company, uh, companies trying to push, push it to the limit for 2022 or this year we are in. And what happens sometimes is they start really, really bad in the coming year. And I would like to, to give you some example of how to avoid that, but also to learn what you've learned in 2022. I don't know where you are in the world right now. Some of you, I know a lot of you are in the Middle East and in, uh, in Dubai and, and, and that area, but I might also be uh, people from around Europe and all that stuff. That means we don't really know what you're looking into in 2023. And even things are fantastic right now or the opposite, we don't know what will happen. So to be prepared, we need to, uh, to take control of the sales game instead of just expecting and accepting what is coming. Of course, we have to accept what is coming, but we also have to react to it. And first of all, we can also create uh, the sales game we want to play. That means instead of just trying to see what will happen, then let's uh, start being prepared and being ready. Well, but let's start here. So some of this today will also be a kind of, for those who have been here, uh, I always really appreciate when people participate in all these webinars. And a lot of time people sent to me, Matt, it was still so inspiring. I heard you say it before, and I'm happy that people can, even from old stuff, get so uh, inspired. And I think that's a good lesson. Right now, we know that the World Cup uh, is going on in Qatar. And, and what is interesting about these sports people, I know a lot of these athletes, and what is interesting is try to imagine how much they enjoy doing the same thing over and over and over again. And they know to be good at anything, you need to accept that my maybe biggest inspiration, Tony Robbins is always saying, uh, repetition is the mother of all skills. That means repeat, repeat, get better, get better, get better. And we have to understand that's why the minute you start being bored because I've said it before or you heard it before, then immediately ask yourself the question. If you are bored, ask yourself this question. Am I bored? because I know I'm not good of what he's saying. And that's why I'm telling myself I'm bored because I don't want to learn. Or am I bored because I'm the best version of myself I can ever be? And I think that the last question will always be, no, I'm not. There's still a way to go. There's still something to improve. And if it's the first one, then you have to work with your mindset because then it's not a matter of skills. Then it's a matter of mindset. Even the second one is about mindset. But anyway, let's start. There is one way to stop looking upon 2022. And the best one is to make a kind of an audit or accounting saying, how did it actually end? And that's happening right now. I just yesterday, sorry, uh, Friday, two days ago, I was with a sales organization where it was like with a whip, uh, the sales manager was trying to push his salespeople to sell more, sell more, close the year. I like that. But there's one big risk, and I'll come back to that. That is that you have a terrible start in 2023. And then he will have to use the whip again. And I will stop using that. I would not do use the stick. I would rather use the carrot. Uh, more carrot, less stick, because people don't like sticks. So let's try to do that. And please, I just saw that uh, Juan is uh, putting up here that you can connect for sure. Please, all of you connect in the chat if you want to. I just have to warn all your... Uh, parasites trying to sell anything here. You will buy my colleague and partner, Mark, Mark. He will exclude you immediately. So the minute I read somebody talking about crypto finance or whatever, goodbye, take care. I don't want to help you to do better in 2023. But I want to share all this with you. And I really want you all to enjoy and share your network. Because if we believe that this is a one-man game, then we make a mistake. Okay, let's look into this. 2022 is about to end. And here we have the result of 2022. This is a box. It can be bigger or smaller. It can be the box for one single salesperson, or it can be the box for a group, a team, or a company, or whatever. This box illustrates the result of the year 2022. And looking into sales, there are 
mainly two parameters that this one actually symbolizes. And the one is customers. It actually symbolizes the number of customers we have here. How many customers do we have? That is an interesting part. Is it the right portfolio of, I'm just putting A, B, and C clients, big, small, medium, whatever, industry, segments. That means the first step is to conclude and, anal and do an analysis saying, is it the right portfolio? Do we love the portfolio or do we actually want to do some changes? That is the first part here before going to 2023. Take a look upon this because this figure here, the number of clients and the distribution of ABC or whatever you call them, that is the first parameter that defined your result in 2022. And the funny thing is, I've seen a lot of times that people actually have a great revenue, uh, even a great profit, but they're looking into a big problem because the portfolio is filled up with what I call the wrong customers. Then somebody will say, wrong customers, we're earning money, so it must be the right one. No, it might be what I call customers of the past and not customers of the future. And that's the strategic decision. Uh, try to imagine that you were selling analog solutions uh, and, and you could see that the portfolio is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and you're winning the wrong customers. You're winning the bad ones. <clears throat> so just here an inspiration, always be constructive critically about your portfolio of clients. Is this really the, the clients I want to marry? <laughs> Is this the clients I want for life? Or did I just end up with the leftovers from my competitors? Because if you ended up with the leftovers, then you probably don't have the right foundation for 2023. <clears throat> but let's get back to that. Another part of defining the result is not customers, it is products or potential. Meaning at the same time we have here, <clears throat> this is the number of clients I have. This is the distribution of how they are divided into different segments. And now we look upon our product portfolio. How well are we in using uh, distributing the portfolio? It could be X, Y, and Z product. And if we look upon this one, it's very interesting. Some of you might remember the old uh, Boston Matrix talking about cash cows and the dog and the question mark and all that stuff. This is actually where we see the real life evaluation. How many customers and what did they buy? And try to imagine that you are selling the wrong product to wrong clients. Then your job for 2023 will be different. If you have a portfolio of the right clients and they're buying the right stuff with a great potential, then you can move on. So first step here to evaluate 2022 is not just to evaluate the gain by revenue or profit or turnover or whatever. It is definitely to do more analytic proposal, uh, sorry, uh, uh, pers um, take a more uh, perspective on the analytic part saying, is this, is this really the portfolio I like? Or should this change? Because if you don't do something to change it, you won't change it. Then it will keep on being the same one. So first, stop and take a look. Second part could be, maybe you could even divide this into clients that you would never, ever, ever lose. So how do I make sure that they stay with me in 2023? And there might even be clients that you want to get rid of. But maybe you do, do what I call your wish list, dream clients, clients that we really want to, to, uh, to keep here, the most important clients, not only because they're buying a lot, also because they have a lot of potential. It might be that some of these clients are actually potentially the most important clients we have. So here you're starting actually to do the foundation of doing your presentation for 2023. Unfortunately, a lot of salespeople are just, sorry to say, they're just running like uh, headless chickens uh, running around, doing more, doing more, doing more. And the problem with selling is very often that we do too much and think too little. So stop, think, and no time is better than the end of year to see what started the year and how do we actually work from here. So uh, actually, let's just stop here and saying this was the first part of the analysis. We will do a little more later on because there are more perspectives on doing this analysis on 2022. But we all know why we do it because this, this position here 
is the foundation, the platform to jump from in 2022. Because now you can start defining, should we grow by having new clients? That's one, new clients. That means my acquisition and new business strategy will be the most important in 2023. Or should we grow by selling more? That means cross-selling, uh, more selling. Where is the potential we want to grow? And um, I actually just worked with a, with a company. They, they used 2022 to fill up the, plat the platform, the portfolio. They got so many new clients. So what we decided in 2023 is, of course, we should keep on getting new clients because we also lose some. But we will focus on getting more value out of these clients, getting a closer relationship, getting to know them more, do cross-selling, other functions, uh, upselling even, and definitely more selling. Because in, in some with some clients, you, you might have a situation where the consumption from the client is 100% and you're all, only covering up 20 that means there's 80% to grow on. Uh, how will you do it? Because you can sit down and relax and wait for it to come, or you can make a plan to make it come. And you can even remember if you do nothing on this 100% and you have 20, if you do nothing, there's a risk that the other competitors will take your 20%. So you cannot, you cannot really sit down with maybe your most important client with a huge potential uncovered from your side. And then you're just relaxing saying, we are in with this client. No, you're not. You have to protect. And the best way to protect is actually to develop. So here we're starting. And honestly, when I ask salespeople, and this is how you can say goodbye to 2022. When I ask salespeople, please make a list of your five most important clients. They normally only take a look upon this from a perspective of revenue turnover, how much they're buying. This is totally crazy. So of course you should take a look upon, are they important for the future? Is there more potential? Uh, are the best ambassadors? But be more be more detailed in your evaluation. But, and also know from a management perspective, unfortunately we are, we are limited and, and just see this from the side saying, uh, do we actually earn money on these clients? So that's the first step. This is take a look at your portfolio. We're gonna use this later because now we can actually form how would we like 2023 to be? So now we're putting up goals. Uh, that, that is an, an interesting part. Now we're putting up goals. How will we grow the portfolio? More clients, more selling, combination, balanced. Some might even have what I call, you might, I, I'll give you a little uh, extra here. Now you might see who you are because here, I'll give you two examples in a company I just worked with. They, uh, they had two salespeople. Remember, here we have the customers, here we have the potential. And these customers and potential. I'll give you two examples of platforms, portfolios. And uh, what is interesting here, I have one here. You see this? Wow. That was a sales guy in a company. Only three clients. He was a 100% supplier for these clients. Nobody else was selling just a small thing for the clients. He had what was called a president portfolio. This is the president, il presidente. Three clients selling everything. He was the real, he was the, the, the general for this. There was one problem here. First of all, uh, he reached his target every year. He reached his target every year, no problem. But honestly, he was so strong. He was so competent, but he was also getting lazy. One day, what happened was that this guy, he lost one of the clients. There was a merger, they were put together and they, part of it was sold. And then that definitely, he went down to around 70% of his portfolio. The problem is not the 70%. The problem is not the problem of losing a client. The biggest problem is the habit of working, getting new clients. 
This guy, who is the most prestigious salesperson they have, that is the Presidente, the best person they could ever have. But his mindset and his habits and his way of working are just terrible because he should be the first one to get more new clients, maybe even give them to others. And, and what I think here is, one of the problems is, how could you imagine that this guy could get back to what built him up, getting new clients? He haven't done it for 20 years, but he's always reaching his target. And the biggest problem is not him, that's his manager evaluating him for reaching a target, reaching a target with a portfolio like this. Sorry to say, it's, it's, it's crazy to give any people a bonus or premium just for, for taking care of a portfolio here. We need to put up other goals. In the same company, we had Il Presidente. We also had this guy here, boom. You see here, customers, these are buying customers. These are leads, but they're only buying very, very little of their potential in this company. This guy we looked upon here, he's called the Beatles salesperson. The Beatles. The reason for those of you old enough to know the Beatles, uh, these Beatles salespersons are what I call hello and goodbye. They go to a client, they sell something, they leave again, and you don't hear anymore. The big problem for those guys are that leads are running in, getting to be clients, running out again. And if you take a look upon how expensive it is to get a client, try just to see it today. You do your social marketing, you do your events, you do your promotion, you do your participation in, in fairs and conventions. You do so many offers, so much budget to get a client. And then we treat them like hello and goodbye. That means we have no policy for retention. We have no policy for what to do. And the big problem is Il Presidente, he's wasting his opportunities. And the Beatles boy, he's actually wasting our good our goodwill and our reputation. So what I need to do as a sales manager and as a salesperson, that is first of all to understand when we reach the level where we get a client from a lead into a client, how can we grow? Second part is if we grow too much, how do we spread the risk? So here we actually need to be more, much more focused on understanding what it takes and I'll go a little deeper into that later because now we're not only talking about the overview and the strategy, we're also talking about behavior, mindset, competences, skills, practicing, training. Just like if I was a, a, a coach for the football team playing in Qatar right now, if we have too many people scoring against us, I'll have to practice my defense. I might have to reorganize it. And if we're not scoring enough goals, but we have a lot of, chances to score, then I'll have to practice. Are we doing the right thing? Are we strong enough and kicking at the goal? And that is your job if you're the sales manager, you have to do this. That's also why uh, my colleague Mark is here. And a couple of times today, I'll promote, I'll, uh, promote one of my uh, coming events because in January, uh, because now we will soon leave 2022. In January, we are, we are hosting in, in, in the mid of January, we are hosting a sales event uh, as called Sales Booster 2023. In that event, Mark will share the link now in the chat for you. In that event, you can bring yourself, you can bring your team, and then we will help you to elevate 2023 to being the most amazing year you ever had. Doing something different, doing more of what is actually works and doing more of what you didn't do or start doing what you didn't do. And, and you will make a plan and you'll go through a strategic, tactical, operational perspective of how to develop your sales. And strategic is actually where we start now, because if I have to start thinking strategically, I know to, I need to know my position right now. And my position is how many clients, how much do we sell? And now I can make a plan for 2023. And then I have to look upon this one because we all know, very simple. We all know results, doesn't come by themselves. There is a big, a big risk right now because in a lot of economies, the last two, three years has been, sorry to say, the wind has been tailwind all the way. Even 
even you were a terrible organized organization, even bad skilled salespeople, you were unfortunately successful selling. And that unfortunately means that nobody uses the mirrors principle, uh, taking a look at the mirror saying, are we good enough? Could we be better? What are we doing? We are just looking at the figures and saying, wow, look at this, another sky high, all time high, we are fantastic. No, you might not be fantastic, but you're only looking at the results. We have to look a little deeper upon this. Did we do the right efforts, activities? Did we actually do what we should to create the results? So now you can start doing, if you had a plan, what did we plan in Star for 22? And did we do it? Did we stick to the plan or did we change? But if you had no plan, you, you cannot evaluate. So that's what we need to start for 2023. What is the plan? How to work? Where to work? Which persons, sorry, which clients to contact? We need to look upon this. And second part, our foundation. And foundation here actually means, I put it in a small figure here, the customer portfolio. How many customers? How much did they buy? And if you want to see, this is what I call the present, this is now, and this is the future. If you want your, if you want to portfolio to look different in 2023, that means I want to grow from here to there. More A, A customers, more B, more special segment, more upselling, more cross-selling. If I want to move from here to there, I need to look upon this. The foundation is here and the result will be created there. Then I can plan my activities. What should we do to go there? How should we work? How many visits? How many cold calling? How many of this? How many of that? But you're not planning it. Just like, just like a diet. If you want to change your weight, get in better shape and condition, what should you change? Because I can go on the weight and, and get a body measurement here in end of December, and it will show match you to fat, you're not eating the right things, you look like shit, this is your position. If you I want to look better end of 2023, I have to make a plan. Less eating, more exercise, more relaxing, doing this, doing this. That means to go from here to go to here, meet, need action. Not just a plan, it needs action. And the funny thing is, we know we have a goal to hit for. We make a plan with activities. We have the foundation and then it hits this one. The will. Is the motivation there? Is the actually, do we have the mindset? Because the road to hell is paved with bad excuses of not doing what we should. So if we really want to do this, what is the mindset of the organization? Do we understand the why of doing this? Do we understand the reason? Do we have the hunger to do it? Or are we just relaxing, celebrating results without taking a look upon our competences and quality and the way we work? And unfortunately, in a lot of sales organization, when just you see the right result, we are happy. I, I worked two weeks ago, I was with a company. They are in this year, they are 100% over their budget, double up. What we discussed is a very interesting thing. We discussed, was this because of a very good market? Was it because you were really bad at budgeting last year? Or is it because you did an amazing effort? When I asked them about the amazing effort, some of them said, wow, Matt's. We might have been a little lucky. That's great. That's interesting. You might have been a little lucky. Yeah, and we might have been a little unambitious last year. That's okay. No problem. And that is one of the problems with budgets. Salespeople love to go over budget. That's very often make them being less ambitious. Uh, they don't like to correct budgets, but that's an option. A budget is not necessarily fixed. It can be corrected. You might get uh, clients you didn't expect or better market situation or worse market situation. But a lot of salespeople, they put up a budget and they want to make a safe budget that they can reach. And honestly, that's sometimes the problem. I'll give you one example here. I used to work in a company where we were selling mobile phone subscriptions for big uh, corporate clients. We started out with a, 
uh, being newcomers in the market. So for us, if we took here time and we took here result, it was very, very easy to see we had to start slowly with the budget. So we put up a budget and time here, it should go slowly. And then we had a budget that should waste like this. We started out competing in this new market. And uh, what we saw was that in the beginning, it was much tougher than we expected. We were behind budget and we were still behind budget. And then suddenly something happened and we went over budget. So what you saw here was that we were behind and then we came in a situation where we hit a, over the budget. So we hit here budget and result and we were on a plus. Everybody in that company, the sales people were, whoa, we are fantastic. We did so well until, until we saw the development of the market. Market were going like this. Boom. So what you see now is that we started out below our budget. We reached a level where we took over our budget and sold more than budget. But market was growing more than our result. So every day we have lost market share. Unfortunately, in a company where salespeople are only measured by budget result, they have no idea that every day they're losing games because we might end up with the wrong customers, the right amount of customers, the wrong potential. That means we are doing good, but we are not doing best. And good enough is an enemy to doing best. And this is a situation where we are, we are, we are in a lack of reality uh, because we are seeing that, oh, we are so good. We are over the budget. No, you're not because budget is something we made long time ago. Nobody could see that market would do that. That means if you think you're a success, you're a big failure, you're even bigger if you don't remit it. So here we have a situation where we have to measure all the time how things are going and to understand that even we did a plan, we might change this plan. And that's interesting. So for your point of view, are you a success when you compare to your budget? Are you a success when you compare to your market position? Because if you're look at losing market position and market is growing and new competitors are coming, then you're not a success. It's only in your own opinion. But that means I put up my own goal and then I adjust whether I'm good or bad. Here we have to be much more sophisticated. And I'll give you one more example here that is a critical thing here because this is being strategic understanding that losing market share, it's a real big problem because we're starting next year we might not even be number one, two or three or four in the business. We might be number 10, 11, 12, 13. We're losing position. So now we're back to this. We hit the results. We have a foundation. We want to reach somewhere and we have the will. Now I'll give you one more example that some of you might see. This is what I call the most terrible problem that we ever reach when we are hitting around New Year. It is even more terrible when we're hitting around summer holiday. The problem is that we're getting a lack to see results. I'll show you now. This is time. Time means we have here month, weeks, years, whatever. We know from before, we discussed this, results, results are coming as the most important thing, yes, but they are created by something different. That means they are created by the effort, the plan, the activity. That means we put here an A for activity. <laughs> Results comes from activity. Activity comes from mindset, meaning having the right will, opinion, being ready, the right focus. Mindset need a foundation of skills and competences and maybe needing a portfolio. That means foundation, mindset, activity, and this result. What I'll show you now is any, any sales manager, any organization's nightmare. Hello, hello. Please mute your phone. Uh, uh, any person's nightmare. I'll give you one example. This is a sales guy, and we just call him A. 
this sales guy take care of a region, a district, whatever, and he is doing pretty well because market is also good. So he's over budget. He never looks upon the activity and the plan. He just takes what comes in. He's there and people call him and he sell and he's fantastic and he reached his budget. Mindset is positive, but he doesn't think about getting the right clients. He has no will to do it. He's just working. And foundation, he don't give it a thought. He's just focused because his manager is just focused on results. So what's happening here is he create amazing result. No, nobody ever question is he having the right attitude, the right mindset, the right will, the right competences. Is he doing the right thing? No, I care when he do results. I hear that very often from sales managers. Don't care about it. He's on budget. Yes, on budget. But then what happened here in the company was it came to an end. Sales guy A left the company. So the company had to go and get a new one, a new salesperson. And what they did was they put in a new guy. They hired him. We call him B. And B took over this portfolio, this district, this region, this country. He took over. Immediately, he sat down and took a look upon uh, the portfolio and the situation. He reached a, a small plus, but he could see there were problems here. Foundation needed to be changed. So he started saying, I need to change my mindset. I need to change my activities. And he said, the first step is I need different clients in the future. Mindset, different activities. Then unfortunately, market started being a little bad. He kept on saying, no, we need these clients. I need to keep on. He got a minus. He kept on doing this. He got a minus. You see the problem. For those of you who don't have the patient developing the right portfolio, the right sales culture, the right mindset, you see what is the problem now? He's on minus here, but he's trying to change things. In some organizations, he will get one month, one week, one quarter. In some organizations, he get one day. The big problem is after doing this, trying to change, the organization said, sorry, A, sorry, B, you're out. We take care of this, you're out. We need a new sales guy. So they are again hiring. And of course, the best thing that could happen for them was to get back A. But A, he has left to another job. He's not possible to get. So what happened is they took somebody who looked like A. Impatient, short-term thinking. And the funny thing is, it took, took only one period to get a result. Why? This is the problem every day in sport, in business, in selling. If you look upon this, he took over the district and everything B have done created his success. Here, you see the reason for failure? Everything that A did not do created B's failure. That's why when you hire a sales guy or you are a sales guy, you have to understand what happened with the patience I have, what happened with the long perspective, short perspective, short term, long term. We have to stick to believing that what we are doing right now is the right thing to create results unless we want to be so transactionally that we are just doing day by day by day by day. But that will kill the mindset. It will kill the development. And that means if you go back to seeing this, you have no chance of changing anything. As we talked about here, if you want to change, you will probably not see the result by the day after you tried it. It might take one week, one month, whatever. And that's why I'm telling you, you are hitting right now the most dangerous or at least the second dangerous time a year, Christmas and New Year. Summer might be more difficult. Why? Because what's happening now, you're pushing your organization and they are trying to close all deals. And then what happened is 
they go on a little Christmas vacations, uh, the, the customers are on vacation, and you come back in January, and you have no meetings in the first week because people are tired. They were so tired when they left for holiday and difficult to get people for meeting in the first week. So the first week after January starts, they arrive starting getting meetings, but for the second meeting, people are not back from holiday. So in the third week or the fourth week, we start getting some meetings. And how long time does it take from a first meeting to a decision to an order to send an invoice? Might take a long time. So that means if you have only, if you're not starting to having the best meetings until end of January, you might expect results to come in February, March, April. That means what you see here is the postponement of results because you're not doing efforts. In summer, I normally say to people, just before your summer holiday, you start preparing so you have no new meetings. You're just following up on old proposals. You go on summer holiday and you come back. Normally, in my opinion, a summer holiday can take, take between six to eight weeks, not because of holiday, but because of the lack of activity and focus. That's the same for Christmas. That means instead of pushing your organization to close the deals now, then prepare them to be ready to start 2023. And how do you do that? First of all, we need to understand what is actually going on here. We know that to create results, there's only one thing that can help me to do this. And that is the customer experience. Customer experience here means how many meetings, what kind of clients, what are we talking about? How strong are we? How good are we in communication? How well structured is the meeting? How do we follow up? Blah, 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 blah. This is about sales and marketing. This is the customer experience. And now I have three things to focus on to make sure that my sales team is ready for 2023. First of all, and most important, are you ready with the strategy? Meaning, did you make the segmentation? Did you plan what clients you want? Did you have some products that are more important than others or services or whatever? Did you do the after sales? Do you want to sell more after? Do you do the pre-sales? You talk about your strategy and you do your prioritations. And these prioritations are really important. And you also discuss with yourself, how do we budget? Because maybe your budgeting procedure is a problem for your sales activity. So what you do here is you start saying, what are our priorities? You put it on this and you align it in the sales organization. Actually, you could come down to saying, if I have a sales guy and I preferred, I would like you to have meetings because we want to win this market this segment. So please meet with A customers, A, name them A. And if you see people having B meetings or C meetings or D meetings, make a bonus system or a remuneration that keeps them away from doing this because you want them to go here. So if your bonus system is only focused on results and budget and how much they sell, you're already killing your strategy because who would ever have a meeting with the most complicated client if it's easier to close with somebody else, but that's not what you want. This is this. This is just like you go to a bu uh, buffet uh, for eating and you know you have to lose kilos, but you go directly to the dessert because it's easier. If you know what you go for, you go for the salad, the vegetables, uh, the, the low fat meat, but you go to the dessert, you go to the dessert buffer and take the cake. This is the same. You need to be so sharp in your rotation, strategy wise. What market is it we want to conquer and what kind of product? What is our vision mission here? If you don't do that, then do like this. Let your salespeople run and hope for the best. But hope, that's maybe for the church. It's not for selling, it's not for business. Business is rotation and focus. So, first of all, Strategic focus on product, on customers, on market, because then we can plan where to go. Now we go for the second part. Second part is structure and process. 
That means I have to plan how to do what I planned. That means this is my strategy. These are the clients I want. Great. Now we go down to structure. First of all, we can plan how we sell. Maybe we even plan how the team can work together. Maybe I plan how to use the product managers. Maybe I plan how to use the customer service. Maybe I plan, you're the sales guy. This is your role here. Maybe selling here comes from marketing, pre-sales, sales, after sales, service. So you only have one job as a salesperson. Great, let's define what is your job. How do you hand over? How do you give it to the next person? How are handovers to you? That means I can actually do what I also call a dream calendar. I can put in here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then I can put in what are my most important tasks to do. I can put them in the calendar and say, if contacting A clients is the most important, then let's do it every Monday morning. Friday afternoon, I make the lead list. Wednesday morning, I follow up. Great, that's perfect. Second part is, I want to be better to release the potential in my clients. Great. And that means I have a list of 20 clients that I should release potential. Great. Then make Tuesday and Thursday potential days. So plan more. And I know every time I hear this, salespeople are saying, oh, I cannot plan my day. That's amazing. How do we know that? Oh, I tried. It didn't work. Maybe you want that discipline. Maybe you want that strong. Maybe you're not strong enough to argue for why you do it like this. And then we're back to one thing here. And this is not a matter of competences, then it's a matter of mindset, motivation for doing it. So here we're talking about people need to understand the strategy because when you know the strategy, you can make structure and process help you to support to reach it. And you also have to look upon your bonus here. If you want to have people have bonus for getting new clients, then don't give them value for selling to old clients. If you want them to do more potential selling, then give them for upselling or cross-selling or more selling. So here we actually need to have a bonus scheme that can help them to go in the right direction. And then of course, we come down to the last part of this, how to build the right culture with the right understanding, the right mindset, the right will, and the right competences, the right behavior. Because in the end, everything that the market customers and market will see, that's what's happening here because this is our activities. This is our effort. And the market can only see what we do. Not we, they, it can, the market cannot see our intention. So that means market can only see what we do and not our intention. And, and that's why we have to plan. Okay, is this the way we want to work? Because very often we hear people say, oh, culture eats and beats strategy for lunch and breakfast and dinner. Yeah, but that's a problem. Instead of seeing them eating each other, then invite them for the dinner. So that means if you use strategy right, you build culture. If you use structure and process right, you build culture. And culture is exactly what we're talking about here. That is the mentality. That is the mindset, the motivation, the skills we need to have. And now we're coming back. How can I actually work with this? Because what we can do now is we can start taking it from this level, planning, strategy, these clients I want, plan, how do we do it? Culture, behavior, how to do it. And how to do it is the behavior. So what we can look upon now is, try to imagine, you were, you were coaching a football team and you have a special way of playing that you want to play. Very often you see these best, these best national teams in the world or the biggest teams in the world, top teams, they don't necessarily get the value of all the best players. Because if, they don't, if the best players don't fit into the way they want to play, they don't fit in the structure, culture will be a problem. So they're actually hiring people that can sell, sorry, play the way they want to play. That's the same. Are your sales people selling the one the way you want to sell? Or are they selling in an old school way? Are they selling like we did 20 years ago or 10 years ago, just by going out, presenting product, hoping and praying? I, I heard somebody saying, spray and pray. Let's see what happened here. 
So are we just selling the way we're used to doing? Or are they playing the game the way you want to play the game? So what I'll show you here is, first step you have to decide to form this is, you have to take a look upon how, what, what is actually selling? I remember five, six, seven years ago, there was a lady who asked me a question, Matt, is selling just selling? And I said, what do you mean by that? So her name was Karina. I said, Karina, what do you mean? Is selling just selling? I said, I, I, I don't understand what you mean. Then she said, Matt, is running just running? And I said, no, of course not. Then she said, what is the difference? Oh, yes, there's a difference between a 100 meter run, a 1000 meter run, a 10 kilometer, a marathon. That's totally different. Okay, what does that mean? She said, does that mean anything for the way you run your game if you want to win the way you practice? Yeah, sure. If you're running a 100 meter like a marathon, you'll never win it. If you're practicing a 100 meter like a marathon, you'll never win it. So we have to start by saying, what is the way we want to sell? Also, because that's actually very important for the way we approach the market. It's also very, a very example. Here is, it's an example of how we approach with marketing. Try to imagine marketing go out and say, buy from us. We are the best advisors in town. And what you meet is what I call a hidden one salesperson. Somebody who said, you want to, uh, to buy this 20% discount closing today. We want to be advisors, but he's closing on discount. You see the conflict? You will never get the position you need. So here it all starts with you understanding two things. This is about selling. We have two opposites here. It, it's not a matter of good or bad selling. It's a matter of ways of selling. Here we have what is called very transactional. Transactional selling. And remember, it's not about good or bad. Transactional selling is the simplest way of selling because somebody has a need, they want to buy this pen. I have a pen, I sell them a pen. Transaction means we transact somebody between us. There's a transaction. I get money, you get a pen, done. Deal is done, it's very, very easy to do. Transactional selling and the situation is that all focus here is on the product very often the product and the benefit, and very often we end up in some kind of a price competition, or at least what I call a logistic situation, meaning that it's all about low price, fast delivery. Price could be higher, but still fast delivery. What we see here is a lot of this selling goes online. That means if you have 20 people running around trying to sell this product, you might need to digitalize your selling. Meaning that instead of doing all this, be more digitalized, you can hit many more clients and you can actually sell 24 seven and you can actually do a lot of different things than just having 10 people are running around trying to do meetings and selling. So here, be more digitalized. You can still use your sales people, but you might need to use them differently. And this one is interesting. If this is the right way for us to do it, then we need to go back and decide we have a digital sales strategy. We need to structure it differently and culture should be symbolizing that we are now more digitalized. Maybe, maybe we should develop a chat function, a, a phone support, a, a fast reply to people asking, and you can still be a big brand. We've seen a lot of big brands being selling on product and price and very fast delivery. So this is the first step to take. Second, to go to the other side, is about relationship. And just to challenge relationship here, because I never met a salesperson that said, it's not about relationship. No, 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 it's always about relationship. But it's not just knowing people, because also here we know people, and, and even we know them more, because when we have online, they always want to say, to, to gather up my email, to keep in contact with me. So it's not a matter of having a relationship because no sales company would say, I want no relationship with the client. They all want relationship with the client, but it's the way we have the relationship and how we treat it. Because over here, it's 
all about the relationship and even about relationships. We sometimes we bring in competitors to speak with our clients because what we do over here is we are co-creating and we are trying actually to create solutions together. That means I totally, if I'm really on the right side here on, on a relationship, what I'm really strong at is I really forget my own budget because what we're doing is it's always about creating solutions that are purpose-driven. What difference can we do together for the planet, for sustainability, for ESGs? What can we do actually together here? Maybe we can join forces. I can help you, you can help me. And the minute you start thinking it's about my budget, you lose because then you're not there. I had a very good example. One of my companies, they are in the recruiting business. One of my customers, they're in recruiting business and they have a huge company as one of their customers. And what happened for them was they were called for a meeting. And that meeting was planning next year. And when they arrived at that meeting, four biggest competitors were all in the same room. So now five suppliers were in the same room. And the big, big client buying from all these five HR recruiting search and selection companies, they started the meeting saying the following. We gathered together you, five, five suppliers, five partners. Why we put you together today is we want you together with us to develop the best possible solutions for the future for us, for our partners, for ourselves, and for you. So you're invited to the party, you're invited to creation, but the minute you start thinking, what is my bite of the cake? You're out. So for two days, they were doing a workshop, trying to find out best ways to hire people, find people, get this employership. One of them left because they said, no, we see war as a, sorry, we see sales as a kind of a war, winning and losing. We cannot participate in this. But the four other state, and of course you're sitting down four people, you know, there's a budget of 100%. We want at least 25%. But the funny thing is, if you think differently, how much impact can I do to make them be better? I might get more than 25%. But the problem is a lot of people start thinking sales is a war. No, it doesn't necessarily be like that. Sales can be a cooperation. That's why we are here. So talking about relationship, then it's about open mindset, lower barrier, being not defensive, being more open-minded to work together. And I think those of you said, oh, I'm a relationship salesperson. Yes, but now you're not this way. That means it's very difficult to go all that way. And that's also why we have in the middle, we have here product focus, purpose focus, and here we have Solution focus. Solution focus is very much about need and solution. Be able to uncover needs, present solution, and competition, of course, here is how easy can I make it to buy? Can I make it easy to buy and easy to decide? And then we can compete. Of course, I need to understand you. And the more I go to the right side, the more on relationship, the more I go to the left side, the more I go on the more transactional digital part. And right now, the problem is that solution selling is a kind of way going either left or right, meaning we have a split in the middle. And of course, when you want to do this, when you want to do this, you have to define what attitude, what behavior should my people have here, here, or here? Because if they have the wrong competences, mindset, you might decide we want to sell here but my people are here, then you have a gap. That means this is the first strategic and maybe most important strategic decision you have to make. What is our sales philosophy? What is our method? Because that actually totally defined the way people should work. I've been working with sales training for 25 years, actually plus 25 years. And I've been training a lot of people like this. I was called, can you come and train our salespeople? Sure I can. We want them to learn solution selling. That's great. I'll show up. And I did a big mistake. I started learning them solution selling. That means uncovering needs, understanding the client, presenting solution. 
But what the management wanted was actually more like what I call transactional selling. They wanted persuasion selling. And they said a couple of times to me, Matt, can you learn them to be much more faster to present product? But what I saw was they didn't understand sales philosophy. They were trying to get people to be solution sales people instead of actually being what they wanted, deal closers. Also, I've seen somebody who was in advising business. They wanted to, oh, we want to be challengers because they read the most amazing book called Challenger Sales by Matthew Dixon. Because when we hear, I want a salesman that can challenge. Yeah, but did you know that Challenger Sales actually is right here? Because we are not focused on product. We are not focused on need. We are focused on insights and how to inspire people. So what you need to design and define here is, what is the way we want to sell? Just like the sales, sorry, like the coach in the football uh, World Cup in Qatar. He is planning the way we play. Some more defensively, some more attacking, some more with the ball positioning, some want to kick it and get away. We are defining this. And then I can recruit. And of course, some of you are unlucky that you are left alone with the 10 salespeople you have. And how do I transform them? So maybe we should decide, is it possible to transform or should we play the game that is possible with the salespeople? So please, if you want to be ready for 2023, start seeing, first of all, what is the way we want to sell? What should people actually experience when we meet them? Should they meet a hit and run salesperson? Should we sell on price? Should we be much more ready to, to uncover needs and present solution? Because then we can train people. That's why, once again, I'll just promote, uh, and this is a kind of a product selling. I promote my solution for you because you can actually participate in my sales booster in January in Dubai two day workshop. In these two days, I will walk you through all these aspects from a strategic level to an over, sorry, to a tactical level, to operational level. And we'll do it internally and externally because externally, we need to control, and I'm just giving you a kind of cues here. One thing is that you want to sell in a certain way, but you, do you know how your buyers want to buy? That means if you don't know how they want to buy, you don't know the customer journey, the buying process. And if you don't know that, how can you design your way of selling? So maybe you should start by saying, wow, we need to, to, to try to find out how people want to buy. So what we are actually addressing here, just to go back and summarize shortly, what we are addressing here is, we know that you're about to close 2022. Some of you are pushing your organization to the limit. And the problem is that you might hurt them and do more damage than you do success. Because what you're trying to push them is to make a fantastic 22, and they might end up doing a terrible start of 23. Try to balance that. Second part is, Evaluate what actually was the outcome of 2022. What is the foundation for success? Because if I want to make a jump, the better the foundation, the platform to jump from is, the better you can make success in 2023. And when you're ready to jump, you can take your strategic focus on 2023 and define and design what kind of customers do we want? New customers, existing, sell more, upselling, cross-selling, whatever. Define your strategy. You might even have to divide your salespeople. If you have a lot of salespeople, you might structure them in who is doing cross-selling and upselling. And the most stupid thing I ever heard is that people very often, I worked with a, a company uh, three weeks ago, they have five salespeople, and they just took the country they're working in, and then they made, they sliced it into five parts. And then they said one part for each. But please understand here, if most of the people with the technical need is in this area and the best sales person is down, person is down here, why, why do I do it this? This is too rational. It doesn't make sense. So maybe you should also challenge the way you have your districts, your regions, and, and the way you sell, because it might be wrong structured. And if you don't ask all these questions to yourself and find solutions, you're just doing what you normally do. And now I'll finish with the most inspiring quote nearly I ever heard. It's from good old Mr. Einstein. And yes, he was clever. He said, if you keep on doing exactly what you always done, but you expect another result, this is the definition of insanity. So with all this, 
I want to wish you a little early, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And then I hope to see some of you in January in Dubai for two days sales booster. And please think more of selling than you're just doing selling. Take care, all of you. Any questions, feel free to ask. My colleague Mark is sending a couple of things in the chat and we are always there for you.